Well, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rangru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, we're on Ciano today, and is that a Sturm Tiger I see? Yeah, it's 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 a Sturm Tiger on Ciano. Not the first time we've seen this. True. Who do we have, sir? What's going on? Left hand side in the blue, we have Yap Cock playing the Herman Goren Panda Division, rear of a balanced income. Right hand side in the red, we have Yamin playing second infantry, also rear of a balanced income. So Tuesday was a match of two Mavericks. Today we got some much more balanced individuals here. Second Indian head, we know these guys, tons of infantry. Panzer, you know, Panzer, excuse me, the Fallschirm Panzer Herman Goring, wow. What are we going to expect going up to the second here? I think all the light armor will definitely help out quite a bit for the Herman Goren division, also just the Sturm Tigers. We see last time Sturm Tiger on this map between Gonjo and Kurz, it mm -hmm. worked really bloody well. But uh, yeah, I think for second it's going to come down to artillery, and for Herman it's going to come down to the tank. Well, you know, I wanted a little bit of a rant on Tuesday in terms of the artillery, and and I will say I'm much happier to see the artillery tab from the Indian head here in this one. Uh, by the way, Storm Tiger firing shell number one, going after the 57 mil. It's up. It's over the fences, and ah, uh, oh. it, uh, hit somebody's car in the parking lot. But I don't think it really hit what he was hoping for. No, you got 57 mil is definitely going to need a new pair of pants. So I think it's probably hard to put a pair of pants on an anti-tank gun. You need big pants. That's true. He's got to put the barrel on the, <laughs> the trousers one leg at a time. Yes. Um, but no, so getting back to it. So the second Indian had artillery for all seasons in my mind here. Super excited about that one. Do you see anything in the second Indian head that is unique, different, or, or just kind of noteworthy, or is this kind of a standard deck? Oh, it's pretty standard, really. Just mm -hmm. bam infantry, fit as many Shermans as you can. And then the artillery and airplanes is rare. A lot of the heavy duty firepower is. Now, I know, of course, the Hermit Goring Division, what we're super excited to see is all of those trenches and bunkers of MG 42s and 50 mils in the bottom. But, yeah. um, Airsat's opening. You know how I feel about it. I know how you feel about it. Sturm Tiga number two, looking for the, the Ranger. The, he devastates a small neighborhood, but doesn't hit the Ranger Marauder either. <laughs> um,. Airsets opening. How's this gonna work? Yes, I no, think, maybe. I, I know. I just use it to get cheap control over the central town. I think it's mainly just relying more on the fire support, such as the Sturm Tiger, to be the real brawn behind the operation. The Airsets troop and just acting as a blocking. Oh, it's not a blocking detachment, but a meat shield detachment. But just looking at the rest of the map, is it a really quiet opener? I mean, it's three minutes in. Barely anything has died. And really, the main maneuvers are happening down south with Yamin taking a better control over the Southern Valley. Well, you know, actually, I kind of like, he's, he had two squads of rifles that were going to go into that town and probably take out his airsats, but it would have put them in range of the Stromtiga. So what's he do? Guys, don't get off the truck just yet. You know, we'll take a short break. You can stretch your legs and then come back around to the south. I actually like this play a lot. It shows yeah, like... Yeah, suicide, yeah. Exactly. He's paying attention to the battle space. He's making a decision in real time. I like that. I like seeing that part. I like that too. And I like seeing the Sturm Tiger finally kill something. That range of Marauder has been evacuated from the building quite forcefully. Oof. You know, I look away for one second, trying to see what the heck was going on over here in the north. We see more an 81 mil stovepipe. Nothing too crazy. Um, but you're right, yeah. Where there was a range of Marauder, there is now um, just a, a bit of a peg leg, and that's about it. Yeah. I'm also quite surprised you didn't see any rust on either side in the northern town. I mean, this is usually the key contention point on this map, but both sides are pretty content. Roots is defending. We're seeing that 81 mil mortar being brought up north, but yeah, it's just very light skirmishing from both sides. I say light skirmishing. The Sturm Tiger is a bit of a heavy skirmisher. Well, we do see 233 go down to, uh, to the kind ministration to the 57 mil. Uh, and indeed, he's trying to go after that northern half -trick. Two shots, two kills. Well done to you, sir. Um, you know, I know both both groups are, are infantry divisions. I will to see some sort of daring cavalry insertion. You see where that red flag is just the south of that lake? Yes. Head directly west. I know it's ridiculous. I know it's insane. But oh, oh yeah, a lot of material that would be dangerous from the hill, from the, from the town, can't really reach you. And looking otherwise... Yes, you have that hillside, but sight lines are pretty bad there, honestly. Yeah, central pushes in this map are always risque, and the, the road network does not favor you. 
But you usually, you know, the soft underbelly of both sides. So if you manage to stab your way right through you yeah, and get a good foothold of some infantry in the town, you can do some pretty good damage in terms of points. I, I don't mind when my divisions get risque. I think I'd rather prefer, prefer a much more daring division as opposed to a more sleepy one. Yeah, I always make my 21st Panzer Division rare lingerie. It, ooh, right. Yeah. I had no idea. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive how you can stick lingerie on a Panzer 3M. Don't ask how. I just imagine the size of that G-string. Anyway, as we continue to have the crickets definitely respond to that particular attempt at a joke, we do see that Sturmtiger isn't so much aiming at a unit anymore as just kind of kind of doing preparatory bombardment in a very World War One style here. He shells yeah, he shells the area, pushes back the, the M1919. Pegrin's moving further south. Is this an attempt just to kind of get a, a soft cut, or is this a more intentional push? I think it's just trying to just get some sort of control over that flag, but he's going to need definitely more infantry as the forest are rather American in this case right now with all the well, American infantry scattered around and really Avkonk is just responding with lots and lots of uh, sad troops and with a few like decent troops like the pioneers coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, we have 81 mils coming in here to I think be a little bit more proactive in their defense. Uh, you can see air sats and like you said, the pioneers coming on in. And the rangers, decent and all that. The ranger marauders, nice to have them, but you got to keep the ranger marauders alive. And even as air sats troop, and they may be struggling a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the one problem with second infantry is always the lack of anti tank. Is it a good anti tank gun map just due to how the hill works? You can get those 76 and 57 mils in good positions. Mm -hmm. But of course, infantry anti tank. For second infantry, it's a little bit lackluster. Once those range of mirages are gone, that's mostly the heavy hitters. I have to say, I have a soft spot in my heart for all the light vehicles. From, the, from Same. Yeah, from HG. I, I love seeing those guys. Actually, I wish we could have seen a little more of them over here on Tuesday. I know uh, the Romanians are very well known for them. Um, Range of Marauders over here, yes, going back to Airsash Troop and, and giving a good accounting of themselves, much better than I expected. But um, having some nice firepower for that 233, that's going to cause more than a little bit of a hassle. Yeah, it's really just coming down to the vehicles from the Epcock to really make his maneuvers happen. And once he gets deeper into the forest, he's not going to get really much anywhere just because of all the American infantry. The Rangers holding their own pretty well, forcing the Pioneers back. All the Pioneers get that grenade throw and manage to finish them off. What's going on in there? P-38 is kind of flying high cover. Very interesting decision. Not a whole lot of immediate usage. I don't even think he was trying to unmask that... Anything on the other side? Oh, it's because of the P-47. Okay, that's why. Is he going for the Sturm Tiga? He's yes, he is. Going for the Sturm He's absolutely going for the Sturm Tiga. But the SDK have said 10-4 and the pack in a 20 mil. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get the... Yeah. What? He, no. he could have really made that gun run, really. If the P-38 had been the target of that next barrage, yes. But I think the SDK of 10-4 is just, just enough, um, you know, suppression that it didn't make a whole lot of sense. It was not going to be an accurate one. He probably oh, would have probably lost, lost it. He probably lost line of sight in the same Tigre as well, now I think about it. So it's probably the combination of both. That's, that's fair. You know, I hadn't even realized that particular one as well, but you're absolutely, probably absolutely right on that. Um, Northern side, shockingly enough, these, these rifles are establishing themselves very aggressively against pioneers and, oh, well, originally some airsoft trooping. Understandable, yeah. but, you know, we rag on the rifles. Is this basically the way to consistently use them? Yeah, I mean, American infantry are pretty good in CQC because they do have all the semi-autos and the bar does work under 100 meters. I mean, they're not perfect CQC infantry, but they're better than Panzer Grenadiers, for example, inside of a forest. And for a, okay, that's a 25 points and 12 man scratch. They're not terrible in these infantry on infantry fights. Well, and I think the two, thing too is, and this sounds like a rather ridiculous comment perhaps to make, but they work awfully well when the other guy doesn't have any cover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's usually the ideal situation to be in. Uh, now, I do have to tip my hat over here to this kind of very kind of tentative 
but consistent pressure being going on here in the south. You can see all that's left of Ranger Marauders, and while they will retard progress for half a second, there's got to be some other reinforcement made here. Because right now, yes, they're going to take out a Panzer Strike Squad. Well done. But they're not controlling anything, and that's a problem. No. Yeah, Yap Cock has managed to get good positioning down south here. Manson to capture that flag. He's got that 14 10 slowly bleeding off the arm in here. But just being able to get a lot bit into that valley gives him good control over the southern town. And he still has a whole lot of rather nasty fire support on his hill. Uh, Sturmtiga aiming to destroy another property value, and Ranger Marauder's probably going to die here. Yep. yep. Almost kills his own troops, but... <laughs> such is the price of victory. Yeah, there is. We're seeing some Panzer free ends coming in up north, as well as some German, or an A-German, 81mm mortar being brought in. But Yamin's little penetration up north has been forced back for the time being. He's bringing up some Ranger reinforcements, but... Without any proper anti-tank here, he's not going to make much progress against the 233. Well, he's lucky that 233 didn't actually just pick off one of those squads. That could have been very, very bad. Yeah. I'm actually... Yeah, the Amin really needs to be using his mortars much more. I mean, he has them on the field, but I'm not seeing them shooting. And they're not very useful if they're not shooting. Well, there we, we go. have one thing from, you know, Yes Rooster. That's Yepcock to you folks. Trying to go and take out the 81 millimeter on the American side. The other one searching, for, probably in vain, for that rifle squad, but he might get some minor suppression if he gets some really what he's looking for. Yep. Counter battery fire, not going to be all that accurate because you don't have the radios, but against a three man mortar team, we need just one good hit. And right oh, now. Xylophone. Oh, Xylophone? Oh, we'll check out that oh, musical no. instrument here in just a second. SDK has said 251, and that Ranger Marauder is just caught out in the open. And this this was a move I think happened way too late. Yeah, he's gearing up for an actual attack on the central town, the xylophones on the hold fire. I think he's bringing up the engineers. And I don't know if he times it right and rushes in the half tracks, that would be a good play. I have one problem with that, is that P4. Check it out, look at it down the road. Check out that line of oh. fire. That is Gucci. Gucci line of sight. There we go. Yeah, it's the rockets. The infantry is pulling back. Everybody in their mother gets stunned. But will Yaman be fast enough to do the counterattack? I do like how he does move the engineers not on the road, but yes. it's definitely going to slow him down a bit. Yes. Now, first one that's going to be entering that line of fire is that Greyhound. The P4 can't see him. I think it's range. It's 1600. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay, now he sees the engineers. Yeah, lack of recon. Yeah, I guess that's absolutely true with the P Shrex and the Pioneers just getting absolutely pounded. Um, pioneers, I mean, we're going to see back to a 12 12 here. I'm not going to say that things are suddenly, you know, to use your term, Gucci here, especially as the P Shrek comes in and nukes the Greyhound, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this half track go down pretty quickly either. Yep. There it goes. Oh no, Panther Strike dies, but it's a great push here from Yamin. Like, exactly what he needs to do to try to reverse his point bleed against him. And so far, it's working really well. The main scary thing are these two pioneers, but he has a lot of engineers on his side. Oh, that's great. But oh. if you look to the northern side, there's still two P3Ns and a 233 are just absolutely <laughs> bullying a Sherman into death here. Damn. There's a 105 to the northern side of that, sorry, the eastern side of that. He will get himself some rather scary, scary opportunities, but the American infantry is still very much in disarray. Yeah. Yeah, the northern side isn't looking great. There's so many resources up and put down south, and now looking at it, Yabcock is trying to plug his uh, aggressive bulge in the town here. He's bringing in the stern pioneers, two free runs of fire support, and... The problem, as we see time and time again, is lack of anti-tank. If second infantry is infantry, so he can't do too much. He does have a Hellcat, and he does have all oh, that 57 mils in a good position, shooting over the lake, but it's kind of tough to get anti-tank into his push. Here. It's pretty close quarters in that town. And we didn't appreciate that that MG42 had that perfect range on that, too. Wow. Oh, yeah. 
Wow. And these engineers, the, the first wave is dead. Yep. That I've... didn't go as great as the I mean, as I expected. Honestly, great execution of that plan, getting him in there. I just think that there's a, just enough spoiling attacks happened elsewhere that he was forced to divert resources he would have put otherwise into that central push. Yeah. I think just not rushing the engineers down the road to get all the surrenders. I mean, that would have been suicide because of the Panda 4G. Definitely screwed them over a bit. Because once you get... what Once that rocket strike happens, you need to try and secure that town as soon as possible so you can just fight over the open field instead of having to fight CQC in the town. True. True. Uh, Plucky M1919, by the way, trying to engage at MG42. Uh, with a P4 <laughs> helping him out, I think that's a bit of a mismatch. But uh, I, hats off to you, sir, because Lord knows your head's not going to be needing him soon enough. Yep, and all our Elf North have seen the two free frees doing some actual reconnaissance maneuvers here behind enemy lines, going to be positioning themselves to try and snipe the enemy road here. So it's going to be a good counterattack from here from the Epcock. He just needs some more infantry to try to get into the enemy tree line. Um, we missed a couple of airplanes making a run to the south. Sturmtiger is still alive. He's reloading, too, so we missed some kind of barrage from him. Um, but it's back with 1311, and while some of the light vehicles are going down, including that autocannon 231, I, I think the momentum is still decisively reversed. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing a whole heap of tanks being brought in from the army, a whole lot of Shermans, yeah, it is, and he definitely needs them. Um, Especially up north to try and deal with the Panzer Freeze and two free freeze, but I don't know. Will it be enough to try and reverse this uh, play, so to speak? Because really, I don't know. In town, I'd say the vehicles are scary, but also the infantry are too. Stern pioneers it's gonna need a little bit more than just Sherman. You know, did we see? No, just both Islefords. One still, the one just completely redeployed to the south. So one fired to the north, went completely down to the south. Interesting call there. Um, and I don't know. I guess I guess I was trying to figure out where some of the art, the artillery support went. I honestly have no idea. There was okay, there was artillery support. The battery. Yeah, but I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, in part, but I'm, I'm still I guess surprised a little bit. Um, the 105 Sherman, by the way, he might get taken out over here by the 233. It's going to be close. But not there close enough. Still, damage transmission there. That is not what you want to be seeing on one of your tanks. No. That Sherman's going to be very slow, as we can see. It's more of a uh, King Tiger now in terms of speed. Or Churchill. Uh, Sturmtiger is trying to kill an M10 tank destroyer, so... It's up. It's over. It's... Yowza. <laughs> I bloody love that thing so much. Yeah, it's like, Davy, do you have your Davy Crockett today? Why, yeah. yes, I do, Hans! And <laughs> just, <laughs> there goes half the map. It's like the fat man from Fallout. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Screw you in particular. Boom. I cannot tell you the first time I played it. I think it was Fallout 3. I had no idea really what the Fat Man did. And the giant super mutant comes through. Oh, and I yes. thought, oh, yes. Perfect. I will fire this bazooka thing at him. Not realizing what it was. I died about four times before being like, wait a second. I should look at this real quick first. Yeah. And then you get the uh, Fat Man Merv. Oh, yeah. That's... Which is like the one that shoots eight goddamn mini nukes. Yeah, you, can't, you cannot use that weapon without killing yourself. It's impossible. Yeah. And, Unless I'm... you shoot at artillery. You know, I... I get the feeling that the people who made, um, oh my gosh, Borderlands, took yep. one look at that and they were like, guys, we have to make all of our guns exactly like that. And <laughs> thus, Torg was made. Yeah. Very uh, P good point. P3N is going down from this minorly resurgent push between the M4A1, the Rhino, and the Hellcat. And that is, that's a scary combo, especially when you have three more Shermans to the north. Yeah, it's a great amount of armor and fire support here from the Amin. If he is bringing a bit more infantry, he could definitely do a good play up north. Oh, Yunkers coming in. Yunkers gets the bombs off. Oh, wow. wow. Lucky Rhino. 
Yep, and that Junkers, un unfortunately, I think he deserved to, uh, to to pay with his life after that particular performance. Yeah, Manson to miss the bombs like that, that is not ideal in the slightest. That right now is another day of not being endangered. Oh, down south we got a big push. Yeah, I was just about to comment about that. Two airsofts, two Shrum Pioneers, and two half tracks. Again, not maybe a devastating amount of firepower, but there's still a lot of support in those trees as necessary. Yeah. Yeah. At least we got the Stern Pioneers here from Yapcock to really make up for the lack of firepower at yes, that's Troop and Hav. I wonder if they'll be able to clear it through. I mean, the engineers are scary, and the rifles not so much, so I feel like he has a pretty good chance. Unless more engineers come, which they are. It certainly seems that way. Oh, the uh, waters. Yeah, actually there's smoke coming in. I, I like this. So reactive smoke dropping off to make sure there's not going to be getting engaged on the northern side. It's still going to go very, very poorly for the air sash trooper. Oh, yes. And the Sun Pioneers are just kind of letting the air sash trooper do their thing of getting killed very quickly. Uh, Hellcat, in the meantime, for some reason, was firing APCR shells, I think, over at that 231. So, not even using a cannon to kill a mosquito it was kind of like you are trying to kill the bacteria on your hands, so you put it in a radiation <laughs> bath. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Strength Pioneers are entering the fray, though. They, they've been cut up quite a bit. Oh, if they can get close, they took some, some heavy casualties already. Or oh, drop in the smoke, good play. Allowing mm -hmm. them to get a bit closer for the flamethrowers to do their thing. And there we go. Flamethrowers, uh, flame stuff. What a surprise. True. True. And that half track now realizes there's absolutely nothing that can engage me from where I am right now. So I'm going to sneak on over across myself and get into some rather squirrely, uh, dodgy shit. So. Yep. There's some American half tracks to contest him, contest him, however. And yep, Cox took, took in heavy casualties. He's probably gonna need some more infantry to try and retake his or to try and take his forest, while the army is still pouring in the Americans. Well, and we're phase C too, so um, Valkyries are now an opportunity. Yeah. Still Sturm Pyros for right now. We have a Flak 41. Anyway, so an 88 mil is hitting the map. Um, understandable. I would like to see it maybe placed a little more centrally, especially since, you know, Hirschstrom Tiga. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay. What's I going on? Uh, Sturm Tiga, I think, is going to be moved into that hillside right there, and he's just going to nuke that forest and, you know, say whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah, they're probably going to shoot where that 76mm gun is, which would be a smart move. You know, the whole... Kill everybody oh, no, like God sort him out. No, you're oh, right. He's, he's trying to kill the Hellcat. Interesting decision. Yeah, very interesting. The Hellcat is, uh, you know, pretty smart and moving out of that location. Really sort of probably shot the edge of the forest. Just knocking out at 76 mil would have been a good idea. But Yamin has managed to pretty much retake self and forest. And, you know, and I would just want to say just hit the forest in general. Forget hitting the, the even just the 76. You know your infantry is being engaged. I'll sacrifice 15 points if I can either kill or stress out three or four times that much. Yeah. We're seeing actually a lot of Hellcats down south here. He's using them more of like anti-tank guns, just defensive on the hill, which is a smart move. As with the APCR shells, which they get very limited amount of, they do have two kilometer range, which helps out quite a bit on such an open plane. It certainly does. Uh, northern side, by the way, but there had been many other Shermans before, they're starting to get a little bit more um, endangered. Yeah. As some extra materials being brought on in. Yeah, T-34 really should be able to take both these guys. Unless, of course, he, you know, decides to choke masterfully. He but choked he massively. He didn't I... have stabilizers. Dude, he was sitting still. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much he needs his stabilizers. Oh, look, and, and now the Shrimp Tiga's not going to hit the forest. Here we go. A little bit shy. I would have gone even deeper, but there we go. Boom. There we go. God damn. That's such a good unit on this map. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because you can just back off. It's, it's such a safe unit because once you shoot, you can just back off, reload. You're pretty much invincible just as long as you're not dumb with it. 
And therein, as the bard would say, is the rub, because so many players, including myself, are rather dumb with that Stremtiga. Because the Death Star, the Death Star has no weaknesses. Yeah, it has 175 millimeters of frontal armor. It's supposed to get shot at. Yes. Right? Yes. A small thermal exhaust port. Don't talk to me about that thing. Are we going to see another shell already? No, actually, I even like this too. He's even he's even investing supplies and giving back the Stromtiga a couple of shells. That's cute. Yeah. He's actually been using it so much. He's almost out of ammunition. Um, p -Shrek to the North takes out at least one tank. He might have taken out both. Because I no longer see... Oh, no, there's only one tank he's taken yeah. out. Uh, the other one's further north. But yeah, we are seeing pretty good pussy of all those demolition groups, really scary infantry and available to second infantry, and exactly what he needs to clear through the forest, blow up the Panzer IV, and honestly, I think with demolition groups here, he would be able to get some really good territorial gains, at least take that flag in the north. It just be curious to see what Yapcock does counter-attack rear fend well. He's getting some P Grens and P4s. And that uh, two Iron Cross P4 over here is still very, very good. Yep. Yeah, losing the Rhino is pretty big, yeah. Because, yeah, the P4 is just going to be able to back off out of Zuka range and provide useful fire support. And at long range, those Panzer Grenadiers do beat out the American infantry. True. True. Now, there was a rather plucky Ranger Marauder down south who tried to maybe aggress a little bit and maybe get eyes on that Sturm Tiga, but no, that guy is safely ensconced within his fortress of uh, coolitude. Yeah, I've been seeing a big infantry push down south here from Yapcock trying to get back into the forest. Preliminary bombardment, drop in smoke, and fire to try and get in there. Yeah. Well, 231 as well, trying to go and engage at half-track, which I think is probably the most deadly thing to that entire push. Yep. Kills that. Kills the engineers. Again, there's a range of Marauder that probably will end up killing that light half-track. Excuse me. Yeah, no, never mind. He's, uh, he's, he's not playing hunt. He's not very good at hide-and-seek. No. No, he is not. We've seen the 105 Sermon trying to provide a bit of fire support here. Yep, Cox already took some pretty heavy casualties with the infantry, so... I don't know how well he'll be able to get into the forest. We're seeing the M10s being brought on over. I want to see why... It feels like his xylophones would be shooting a bit more. He has no supply trucks to supply them. And you know, and that's an interesting d distinction between the two. Yes, a lot of armored fighting vehicles over here for um, the second. Wait. He, he, no he doesn't... He doesn't yeah. I, yeah. Like, that's, that's a weird call. For second infantry. That's, I mean, you can get your points for Earth definitely out of, yeah, 80 points for a xylophone, but that's, that seems like a bit of a misplay, right? Yeah. Maybe, what the, what would we dump? I mean, even if the long, like, you'd want it for the long toms and the other mortars as well, like, you want a supply truck of second infantry. Yeah, you it's need an artillery it. Deck. Yeah, you you need it. You need, you need to kind of lean on the, that deck as much as possible. But yeah. you know what? Drop the P thirty eight J that you have in A and bring supply trucks for that. Yeah, honestly, just anything that supply truck is pretty important. And once again, more P forty sevens going on in, more P thirty eight Js going on in, and these guys they get one gets his bombs off, the other one doesn't get the rocks. He doesn't. He's not able to drop the rocks in the pickle barrel. Nope. But yeah, back to a trove trove. Actually, a very. It, it hasn't been a very, like, aggressive match. It's just been, you know, slow pins. Not, like, slow stabs along the 50 50 line here and yeah, But, yep, Cork has just been able to grind down. Yeah, I mean, so well so far. But I, I think. And we got to see just a surrender right there. I actually. I understand that surrender. I think at this point, yeah. it's phase C. You're kind of on the weak part over here. You know that your opponent's got a lot of artillery. You know that your your armored fighting vehicles are starting to die. I I understand. Yeah, I understand. A very like balanced match. I mean, the KD difference was not that much, but Yepcox just managed to hold to more important territory for a longer period of time, which is what allows you to win a match. True, true. Uh, Ranger Marauders are quitting themselves right quite well, Bruner over here, but. 
Other than that, not a lot of standouts. No, losses, the Sturm Tiger only actually killed one, two, three, four, five units, but definitely got his money's worth in terms of the amount of destruction he's caused. Oh yeah, the, you put the fear of God into most of those those units. A couple of missed plays in terms of the shots I had to save for the Sturm Tiger, but again, we've got God Vision, so uh, take that with a salt lick. Yeah, um, apart from that, nothing yeah. crazy on the German side and kills. No, no, not really. Yeah, uh, and, and, really? yeah please, please. No, just a really balanced match. I'm quite funny considering the income. But you know what? I I like again seeing those more considered, not all hell bent for leather games. Like every now and again, we have that one guy who surges out in phase A and gets knocked in the teeth, and now he spent the rest of the time on his back foot. But this year, both groups put together a really kind of strong approach. And unfortunately, at this point, Yepcock was not able to sustain that, and I think a lot of that had to do with not having any supply trucks. Yeah. They're like hedging our bets, so to speak. Now, the, that supply truck thing, I don't get it. That, that has to be a misplay, because those xylophones would have been really useful, especially in that southern, just, just in general, if he manages to keep those supplied. Or can you imagine hitting that northern town with two rocket barrages? Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now you're thinking. I try to do it every now and again. But you know what? Yeah. I don't want to waste all my good thoughts at one point. So any last thoughts, sir? No. And folks, in that case, then, we're going to call it quits for today. Until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.